For you, what's the most frustrating thing about working with Excel? Well, I know for me and for a lot of people out there, it's working with dates and times. In this video, I'm going to take you through the basic concepts. How does Excel understand dates and times? I've got 14 formally that are going to save you loads of time working with dates and times in Excel. And I've got three common and very tricky situations that you might encounter with dates and times and how to deal with those. We're gonna cover all of that coming up in this video. Before we get started, make sure you download the download file, work along with me. With that said, let's get started with this one. So just get onto the summary sheet here. You can choose any cell, just type in a number one in the cell. This is the beginning of our first idea. Excel understands dates as whole numbers. Yes, we can see the date, but that's actually only the formatting. We've got to understand what the underlying data is. So we've typed in one. Let's go to home and then let's format this cell as a date. And we're going to see suddenly we have a date here. Now, why is this date the 1st of January 1900? That's because for Excel, this is the beginning of time. The first day in Excel is the 1st of January 1900. It's day number one. Now take the time to do this. Type in 31st of the 12th, 9999. And then we're going to remove the formatting here, Alt H E F. This is actually the final date that Excel understands. And you can see 2,958,465. That's kind of the last date that Excel understands. So we've got each of these dates having a number. So my question to you is, What's today's day number? Could you work that out? 1st of January, 1900 until now? Maybe not. So let's go to Excel. Let's use the today formula. So just type it in, open, close the brackets. Then what do we get? Well, because I've previously had a date in this cell, we get today's day, UK style, the 10th of September, 2021. But what if we wanted the underlying value? This is the idea that there's an underlying value, which is a whole number. Alt H E F on the Windows PC, or you can go home over to the rubber here on the right and clear formats. And suddenly we've got our day number. Yes, the, the day number of today is 44,449. So this is our first idea. Every day is represented by a day number. That's the underlying data in the cell. Let's go ahead and try the now formula. Now I'm just going to undo this to take us back to our date formatting control Z, of course. Let's type in the now formula. And what do we get here? Well, we get a bit more, don't we? We get our date, but we also get our time. We know dates are understood as numbers, kind of by Excel. Times are understood as decimals. So let's illustrate this again now. Once again, remove the formatting, Alt H E F on the Windows PC. We've got our 44,449, our day number. Then we've got this bit on the end, 0.4867. What's that? Excel understands times as decimals, a certain decimal or a certain fraction of the way through the day. Let's go ahead and illustrate this with a simple subtraction. So I'm going to subtract from our now formula. I'm going to subtract the today formula. That, in effect, is going to remove the whole number portion of that value, Alt H E F here, clear the formats. And you can see this is actually our time. Times are always fractions and we're 0.48 through the day because we're coming up to midday right now. Uh, I'm gonna format this cell, right click and format cells. We'll look at the keyboard shortcut in just a second. Format it as a time and we can see now 11, 41 and 26. So that's how far we are through the day. Excel understands that a decimal it's only through formatting that it appears as a time or indeed as a date. So this is the basic concept. This is how Excel is understanding times and dates. Let's go ahead now and let's look at some useful formulae because I'd, I'd actually say rather than using formatting to get the data to display as you want to display it, just extract what you need from that date. So what do I mean? For example, we can use the year formula, hit a date, Hit the F4 key to give us those absolute references. What are we going to get now? We're just going to get the year, but as we were formatted previously as a time, Alt H E F, if you clear the formats, then you can see the year there. I'm going to hit Control D here, just copy this formula down and take the time to experiment with these other formulae. The month formula, for example, 
I use all the time in my analysis just to display a month number if I want to pick out data from a particular month. What's the day formula going to give us? The day formula is going to give us uh, the day in the month. So it's the 10th of September. We can go for a mi the minute formula here. I think the applications probably become kind of more and more obscure as we go through. No, it's hour first and then minute. So let's go ahead for minute here and then seconds here. And we're going to need some formatting. These values are appearing as zero, of course, because they're smaller than zero here. Well, let's see. I'm not sure about this. Let's see. So I'm just going to uh, open up these values a bit more and let's see. Let's try to understand what's happening here. Yeah, we've got values of zero because this is just the today formula, not the now formula. So that's just giving us the integer, which is the whole, just the day, of course. If we change this to the now formula, suddenly we've got our hours, minutes, and seconds coming in there. I did say I'm not a master of this. I'm still learning, but hopefully these formulae are going to help you. Let's quickly click on the click me up in the top right. If you enjoy learning these formulae, you are going to love our free and unique formula training tool. Yes, we've got 500 formulae and definitions in this Excel file. You can download it to your desktop. It's going to really up your formula game. It comes as part of our cheat sheet mini course, it includes the formula trainer tool, other videos, a nice PDF of the stuff that I think you need to know in Excel. It's absolutely free. The link is in the video description below. So go ahead and try the Excel cheat sheet uh, mini course. So we've got all our formulae here. Also the weekday formula. I'm going to type in weekday here. This gives us the number of the day of the week. Very useful if you need to identify what a weekend is. For example, six is Friday, seven is Saturday, and then one is Sunday. So we can convert the day to a number in the week, should we uh, wish to do that. Uh, what about days? Well, the days formula is going to allow us to find, it's going to allow us to find the number of days between two dates. So I'm going to say the 1st of August, uh, 2021 hit. And then we know that what are the underlying values here? We know that these are just numbers and it's just the formatting that is making them display as dates. So we can actually uh, just say, OK, so if I say the more recent date minus the less recent date, the older date, Excel there is going to return uh, the number of days. And because in this cell, Alt H O E, let's just dis display the day, the day and the time. If we go to custom, we can get Excel to display the day and the time. We can see there's time there as well. That's why we have a decimal a decimal portion on the end of this value. So it's about 40 days difference there. So you can do that just with a simple subtraction. You can get the difference in days and the time as well if you want to do that. But the days formula um, allows us to do the same thing in a slightly tidier way. So equals days, open bracket. So this being the end date, and then this being the start date and then enter and we can see we've got 40 there. So the days formula allows us to quickly understand the difference between two dates. What about this EO month formula? They're getting more kind of exotic, aren't they? they these formulas we go through. Again, we need a start date. So if I wanted to say, give me the last day in the month, give me the last day in the month of the month, four months ahead of where we are now, we can hit enter. And the end of the month formula, if I put the formatting on, let's just use the icons, going to click through and go to short date here, 31st of January, 2022. If I tick this number over, tick, tick it over to five, 28th of February, 2022. These formulae are so useful because, of course, months don't have the same number of days. So you can't just multiply the number of days by the number of months. That's not going to work. So this end of month formula, very useful for finding the last day in the month. What about this E date formula? Well, let's go ahead, type it in. It's going to give us the equivalent day from another month, effectively. Again, essential because the day the months have different number of different numbers of days. So if I say, give me the equivalent date three months later, we're going to get the 28th of May, control C, control Alt V and T to take the formats. We're going to get the 28th of, of May. 2022. So once again, it allows us to get the equivalent date essential because all the months don't have 30 days, but it gets better. What about this network days formula? Now, this is cool because 
It allows us to understand the difference between the two dates, only counting the work dates. So if I say the difference between these two dates, comma, and the second date, and you can see we've got minus 30 there. If I just switch the order here, let's go ahead and do that. F5 and F6, you can see there's 30 work days difference. And with this formula, one thing I love about it is you've got options for the holidays as well. So if you if you have one, that's going to give you Saturday and Sunday, and then you've got all kinds of, of different different options. You've also got this network days international formula, which gives you good options if you're not in the US uh, or the UK. So super powerful stuff. Finally, we're going to talk about the date value formula, but not before we've introduced three common problems. Yeah, let's go through three situations. You know, we've learned the concept, we've learned some formulae. Let's go through three situations that you might find yourself in and how would you deal with those using some of the techniques that we've uh, learned today. So a common problem, adding up times. I was doing this recently on a project. I had to add up multiple shifts. So, you know, eight hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, adding those up to give a total hours work for the week. How would you go about doing that? Well, I'm going to express this as 0 0.6. So, you know, a portion of the day, and I want this Alt H O E. I want this displaying just as time. So I'm going to hit OK here and you can see, yeah, so, so 14 hours is 0 0.6 of a day. Uh, effectively, Control D here, just take that value down. So what if I wanted to add these hours up? Let's see what happens. Alt plus on the Windows PC, Windows PC. What's going to happen here? Well, you can see we've got a value of 19. So what on earth has happened there? Well, that's because Excel, once it gets to 24, it just loops around to the beginning of the clock again. So this can be tricky. What do I recommend here? Well, I actually recommend you clear the formats, Alt H E F. And then once again, Alt plus on the Windows PC is going to add these up, clear these formats as well, Alt H E F. So adding those times together, it's effectively 1.8 days is what Excel is saying. Then I'd go ahead, use the int formula to give me the number of days that's going to take the integer portion of the value and then deduct that integer portion from our total there. This is going to give us the time. Let me get this right. So deduct from this value, this number. Um, oh, it was right. So Alt H O E here, that's just the formatting again. So the rounding, if we hit OK here, we can see, yeah, 0 0.8 of a day is about 19 hours there. So that should help you add up times, you know, treat them as decimals, add up the decimals and then convert them back to times. What about dates as text strings? This one has cost me, it must have cost my business thousands of pounds, this one. I've spent hours, days sorting this one out. Really look out for it if you're importing data into a file. So what do you notice about this data? Let's go full screen a second. What do you notice about this data? You've got to really have your programming head on. Well, you can see there's different cell alignments here. Now, these are critical because they'll point out if a date is actually not a date, as Excel is understanding it, if a date is a text string. Now, this is going to create problems. Excel just won't process the dates properly, won't calculate, won't do whatever calculations you want to do if it's a text string. So what formula helps us here? Well, the date value formula is designed specifically, date value here, tab, is designed specifically for converting a date in the form of a text to a number. So it's designed specifically for this situation. So if we say date value and control D, you're going to take this formula down. If the formula is OK, it's actually just going to um, return an error. Uh, if the formula is not OK and you can see if it's left justified, it's actually a string. So the date value formula will convert it to a formula. So a neat thing you can do here, a quick data cleanse, you can use if error. So if this formula is going to return an error, then we actually just want to uh, use the date as it is because that's not problematic. That's not a text string. Take that formula down and you can see we've got all our dates there. We've managed to get rid of those text strings. Really look out for this one, guys. It has killed me over the years and the date value formula that has rescued me more recently. Finally, what about this old chestnut? Inputting football scores. And a lot of people who watch the channel are working with football data. So if I just go 1-0 here, Mm. Well, well, this did work. Let's see if we can get an issue here. Three, two, you can see that's converted to 3rd of February. So Excel has auto formatted that. How would you avoid that? Well, I'd recommend firstly, 
thinking about the structure of your data. You know, could you use, for example, two columns? So one column for the home, co home goals, one column for the away goals. So could you structure your data differently? If you absolutely have to put the data into a single cell, I would recommend using an inverted comma first. That's going to tell Excel you want to format this as text. That's going to allow you to get your scores in. But bear in mind, they're now formatted as text. So you might have to use the value formula later to convert these back to numerical value. So this is your survival guide, guys. This is your survival guide for working with times and dates in Excel. Don't forget, if you love learning Excel formula, formally, you're going to love the Excel formula training tool. The link is in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.